Yes, I can understand you. I'm Leonard Nimoy. Interesting. A record player that produces beautiful sound and pictures through my TV. What is it called? Ah, Magnavision. Gourmet video for people who know and love video. I see. The system consists of this Magnavision optical video disc player, a laser vision video disc, and my TV. This single wire. Ah. Oh. By connecting this wire to the antenna input on the TV set, the player becomes operable. At first glance, this player, excuse me, Magnavision, gives the appearance of a highly stylized record player. However, I notice the absence of a stylus or needle, an optical laser scanner, and Magnavision was the first consumer product in our galaxy to use it. Now that is an entirely new dimension in entertainment. Every transition, every transition, digital effect, digital effect. Graphic, graphic, title, title, and animation, and animation. You are about to see, you are about to see, was created entirely with the video toaster, the video toaster from New Tech. Remember how it used to be? In science, they call it a paradigm shift. Yeah, a paradigm. Oh, what? What's that? One historical moment. The sun revolves around the earth. Yeah. The next moment, enter Copernicus. Wasn't he Polish? And voila! Same as Chopin. The Earth revolves around the Sun. Shows you how things can change. Right now, this very moment, as we speak, a paradigm shift of equal magnitude has grabbed the world of video. A paradigm shift, and the force behind the shift. We at New Tech. Call the video toaster. Hey, that's a hot name. Yeah. And we assure you, once you've seen what our toaster can do, I'm ready. The world of video will never look the same again. Forty years for the computer to evolve from a garage-sized shrine to a desktop tool, but with the video toaster, it happened as quick as snap. We're not talking evolution here; we're talking revolution. say congratulations you have in your possession the sega activator the ultimate full body game controller feel free to consider yourself a pioneer on the interactive frontier okay i will gotta go now take a look at your fingers identify the ones we like to call thumbs pat them on the back if you can find their backs and thank them 
Up until now, they've been doing all the work, but that's about to change. Remember, the activator is for indoor use only. Any room with a standard ceiling height will do. Just be sure to give yourself enough space to move around. You don't want to be crowded when you use the activator. Avoid setting up directly beneath light sources. Also, avoid metallic or mirrored overhead surfaces. There are seven standard panels and one master panel. Lay them out on the floor in an octagonal shape. Feel them easily snap into place. Make sure the master panel is facing the TV set. Place the optional stickers on each of the panels. These stickers correspond with game actions and controls and will help you coordinate your moves. Remember to maintain this numerical configuration for future setups. The activator plugs directly into your Genesis. Just plug in the AC adapter, turn on the master panel power switch, and put in a game card. The next step is the most important thing you have to do. It's called calibration. The activator beams must adjust themselves for optimum performance to the specific game play area. Stand away from the panels, at least three feet, and turn on your Genesis. Wait for about 20 seconds or until the game title appears on the screen. The activator will not work properly without this procedure. Remember, you'll need to recalibrate every time you turn on the Genesis or when you put in a different cartridge. That's all you have to do. It seems simple because it is. The activator is an actual game controller. Panel 2 is the B button. Panel 8 is the C button. Panels 1, 3, 5, and 7 act as the directional pad. When hit individually, panels 4 and 6 are like the A button. When hit together, they're the start move. Because the activator uses infrared light, you can't actually see the beams. But if you could, they'd look something like this. Start by holding your hand simultaneously over panels 4 and 6. Again, this combination is like hitting the start button. It is also the way you'll pause, play, and select most game options. There's an upper level for arm movements and a lower level for leg movements. You are the controller. Penetrate the invisible beams to activate a move. Withdraw to clear or reactivate. With the speed of light, every punch, every kick, every move you make instantly results in an on-screen action. To break the high-level beams, keep your hands flat and parallel to the ground. Break the beams at a low level by kicking or sweeping over the appropriate panels. Like we said, this is the first time your entire body has been involved in a game, so you may have to cut it some slack. If you still have questions, consult the instruction manual or call 1-800-USA-SEGA. Try practicing with a game you already know. Streets of Rage 2 works great in the Activator. In fact, the Activator plays all of your old Genesis games, plus new titles specially activated for full body action. Just be sure to check the game manuals for the special Activator instructions. Discover a new world of moves and combinations that simply aren't possible with normal controllers. You'll be surprised how quickly your body catches on. The Activator lets you be creative. Unleash that inner warrior. Better yet, unleash two inner warriors by going head-to-head -head with another Activator. There's never been anything like this. Jump into the action with the Activator, the next level of interactive gameplay from, uh, what do you think? Sega! Video just like the networks. There's the four input switcher. Four input switcher. Switch, switch, switch. Look what it can do. It's the world's most advanced production switcher. Any switcher lets you perform cuts, dissolves, and wipes between video sources, but the toaster lets you do organic wipes that you won't see anywhere else. And there's digital video effects. Digital video. Digital, digital video, video effects. effects. Before the toaster came along, digital video meant you had to have deep pockets for big budgets. Not anymore. Now, with just the click of a mouse, you can generate hundreds of real-time video effects. Like what? Like what you see on television. Hey, neat. <laughs> Not bad. I can do this in my own studio. This is great. The video toaster can take you beyond the realm of effects. Way beyond. Into the realm of uh, video illusion. Hey. Just what you need. <laughs>
for the soul of rock and roll. How do I do that? With Chrome Effects. Chrome Effects? Chrome Effects. Effect. See? With the toaster's unique Chrome Effects color processor, you can set a moody mood or set your video on fire. Hey, hot stuff. Then there's toaster paint. Toaster paint. Toaster, toaster, paint. toaster, toaster paint. paint. Look what it lets you do. And you don't have to be an artist to do it. Spectacular network quality graphics. Just grab any frame from your camcorder or VCR and get into toaster paint. You can manipulate the images like that? Yeah, and then display them in one of the toaster's dual frame buffers. You can perform image miracles. Anything else I should know? There's the luminance keyer. Luminance keyer? Luminance keyer. What does that do? The luminance keyer lets you insert one video source over another. Like a person on camera, over a toaster paint graphic. Or even over live video. Is she in Kansas or what? <laughs> Where else? Behold! Look at this! Pretty sure I gotta pick English. So, I got, uh... Hi. I received a 401 Game Boy knockoff. Uh, I didn't want this or buy this. It wasn't really a gift. It was just, like, part of a package of a whole bunch of other junk. So... Uh, we're going to do full Let's Plays of all of these. Unfortunately, we don't have the entire Mario collection because we only have 1, 14, and 3. But, I mean, we got Turtles 1 and Turtles 4. We got Contra Fork and Contra 7. So, I guess, hey, let's just <laughs> start at the top. This blew me away. I checked this out earlier today. So, here's... I don't have a camera. Well, I do have a camera right now, actually, but it's just, uh, it's being a piece of shit. I don't know why it's not getting picked up here. You know what? Let's, uh, it's going to look like shit because it's not my good camera that's hooked up. Uh, it's going to be very yellow because it doesn't want a white balance. This is just a, a camera I use for meetings when I'm too lazy to hook up a good camera. I look like shit today, but hello. I have this, oh God, um... It's a really tiny, shitty little Game Boy knockoff. Four face buttons, two buttons, uh, like a button here that takes you, it kicks you out of whatever game you're playing and back to this main menu. And I was blown away to find out this thing has a video output and it actually came with a cable for it. So the reason why I went, oh God, a second ago is because I'm capturing this with my retro tink. 5x which i i thankfully got like a month or two ago very nice um and the cord for this fucker is super short so if i barely just pull on this this uh on, my, on this fake ass game boy while i'm having a gamer a heated gamer moment i'm gonna yank the whole damn retro tank off my computer i mean it's just plastic it's not gonna break it's a short fall but still just scares the shit out of me um so yeah, we're going to check out some of this. If I get bored with this, uh, we've got some other stuff I can we can switch over to. Uh, just right over there is uh, my VCR. One of the reasons why I was trying to really hard get a, uh, a RetroTank 5X was because it handles changes in resolutions really well. And when you have really shitty uh, VHS tapes that you're trying to play, it's constantly kind of switching and spitting out bad, incorrect, not standard resolutions, which makes it hard to capture stuff. And I have a bunch of tapes I want to transfer over and throw away that, the actual tapes. So we might switch over to that because I've got some weird shit I've accumulated from, from thrift stores. But let's check out Super Mario. This blew me away. This is actually just Mario Brothers. I thought it was going to be some weird bootleg ROM hack, but... It's all fucked up, the emulation. Listen to this. Thanks for all the subs, Josh Moody's. 
gifting all those subs. It sounds so bad! It's all fucked up! And it's so hard to control because the the D-pad on this thing is so goddamn mushy and it's not just that. The amount, like, when you push the D-pad in in one of the directions, those, those buttons on the pad go in deep. They go, they have a a lot of travel until they hit the the bottom and they don't actually make contact with anything to actually send a signal to the console until they're pressed like a hundred percent in so you got to push fucking hard on this d-pad to do anything is this like the the chat's asking is this like 50 hertz version but play at 60 hertz i don't know maybe it's it's all fun. and also like this thing spits out such a shitty video signal like look, look at all the, the, the like dancing all the noise on the the pixels in between like i mean on, on everything but especially noticeable on like the outlines of the the question mark blocks here but yeah it this is just this feels super gross to play uh it's obviously not as bad as that one Super Mario Bros. Special or whatever it's called. That thing's even more fucked up because at least this is still real original Mario Bros. with levels that are mostly you know fun, minus the bullshit maze, uh, the maze levels they have you do every once in a while. Oh, this feels so bad. I'm still doing okay, though. I, I haven't fucking... I haven't died. But yeah, it's it's all messed up. I'm probably gonna die now that I'm at 4-1. I actually had to deal with the lack of two. Which... Someone will probably ask this in the chat if they haven't already. Sorry, my eyes are kind of glued to this fucked up version of Mario currently. Um... Because I get asked every once in a while, Hey, is that Super Mario Odyssey Let's Play ever going to be completed? The answer is yes. I just need to get time to do it, but I want to finish Final Fantasy VII Remake first. Ooh, thanks for the cheer. Um, I'm getting used to the controls. The face buttons don't feel too bad. They're, they definitely travel a bit too far before they like make contact with anything, but it's a lot more manageable than the D-pad is. Oh shit, that was scary as f <laughs> as fuck to do with the this, these controls. Thanks, Pazuzu. Huh. Um. So like the, the I'm hurting my fi <laughs> ah goddamn. Okay. Wow, that's a fast death theme. All right, I died, which I think means we move on, but. Because I had to push so hard on this, I'm, like, hurting my fingers. They're getting tired. Oh, is the cheer thing a little too high up? I'll have to... I'll bump that shit down. I have a whole bunch of stream layout stuff that I need to... F like... My, my whole stream layout's a fucking mess. I was actually putting together, like, a, a cool-ass, like, overlay and shit... To, to put together that was kind of like jokey and you know like cyber internet stuff and I just haven't had the time to fix it uh, <laughs> I was gonna say this for when this shit was done but actually uh, hold on let me let me switch over to like studio mode and just check out this thing real quick oh that looks all fucked up when I try to do that in studio mode never mind uh I was gonna have my stream intros when it actually switches to me with like a camera on and stuff, and it was gonna go to this. Prepare for the following erotic interactive transmission. And then this fucking fucked up yellow square would be me. <laughs> I get downloaded from the erotic. Transmission. And we've, I'm probably gonna have to change the bottom left because we've got like cyber babes. We got some cyber babes in the bottom left. What the fuck is going on with this camera? Hi! <laughs> I got downloaded. And now I'm gonna be over here. 
Uh, yeah, I'm probably going to have to actually go in the bottom left and like edit out the cyber babes, even though they're mostly... So I didn't make this. This is a screen cap from a Playboy video. Uh, they're on archive.org. There's lots of Playboy videos from the 80s and 90s archived. And I found one that was just like cyber babes of 1995. And there's a part where people uh, download babes. And I thought that was fucking cool. That whole bit with the lady saying prepare to for to download an erotic transmission or whatever. That's straight from the video. It happens right after a bunch of ladies take a bath together or something like that. I can't show that part on Twitch, but uh, I thought it was fucking incredible. So this might be my stream overlay. I might recreate the whole thing just so I have more control over it or something, but... I don't know. Anyways, let's go back to this stupid fucking game. Oop. So, we have Super Mario Brothers, which is just Mario Brothers, the actual ROM, but just emulated all fucked up. And now we have Mario 14. There's definitely more than 14 Mario games, so I'm curious chronologically which Mario game this would actually be. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, this is Kid Nicky 3. Was it like a ROM hack of Kid Nicky 3? Is it gonna get all fucked up looking? <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> Yeah! This has to... So I scrolled through the list of all the games that were on this thing earlier, and there's several, like, bootleg-ass games that I definitely recognize from seeing people stream different types of, you know, 100 and whatever games before. Oh my god, look at that. Hold on, let, we have to play this for real. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is a... a, a weird-ass ROM hack that pops up in a bunch of these bootleg things. Uh, mm-hmm. And they they put in the enemies, too, from from Mario 1, even though this is a Mario 3 Mario head. So what's really weird here, I mean, I have never played kid, the, the, the original game that this ROM hack is based off of. God, ooh, that was close. So, I don't know if this is actually being emulated correctly, but this does feel like it's running more akin to how this game would be running on an NES than the actual Mario ROM did. And what the fuck am I doing wrong here? Hmm. Hmm. Perhaps there's some type of... Woo! I got a six... I got a six slide that does not hurt enemies! That looks like that should hurt enemies, especially a Koopa Troopa. Do I have a dive kick? Almost. I can pogo stick. Can I pogo stick on enemies to go higher than a normal jump would let me go? Because I don't know how to get past this jump. It's like I'm playing Cuphead here. No, that just kills enemies. Yeah, I like that they didn't re Whoa, okay. That was almost cool. Yeah, yeah, I like how they didn't even go through the effort of editing all of the different frames of the, the animation here. In a different game, I think attacking the wall and bouncing off it like that in a spin would be pretty cool. But not this game. Hmm. Don't... Not sure what these are or what game they're from. I would like them to stop. No? Hmm. Well, we're gonna move on when I die. Which will probably be quite soon. I need two keys? To open this door with one keyhole? Maybe?
Hmm. Can I pick up and move the spring? I'm really trying to... <laughs> uh, give this game the benefit of the doubt. I assume there's logic and reason being enforced within its... its... Hmm. So why- okay, I see. So you hold down the button, you can, like, charge up the- the- the bounce off the wall, kinda. But I can't reach that thing still. <laughs> yep, alright. Hmm. Alright, well, that's Mario 14. So Mario 3... Is that just Super Mario Brothers 3? Yeah, it is. I think it is. I mean, why the a lot of the sound effects are still like wrong, but at least it seemed to be running at the correct s speed or closer to it. Whoops. I fucked up. I don't get a a leaf from that box now. These bits are still, like, way off the screen. And I they need to be smaller. There we go. Sure. These don't show up in the stream archives, because I know some people don't like seeing notifications pop up on the stream and archives. So, when I'm fucking with those, you're watching this on YouTube, you're like, what the fuck is Chip doing? That's what I'm doing. This just seems to be Mario 3. With no weird changes other than the emulation is like I'm trying to play it on a computer at school in 2005. Any emulation was better than that in 2005. Maybe more like when I was in 6th grade or something. I don't know, that's just Mario 3. I say we move on to something more interesting. Is this just Dr. Mario? Oh. <laughs> Hello, my girlfriend, Voidberger. The, in Streamlabs OBS, if you're using that at least, there's like a little... Uh, next to your sources, there's a little button you can toggle to tell it what it gets recorded to or sent to or not. This music! Also, Browse. Hello, Voidberger. I've literally asked you before if there's any I way. thought I told you before. Oh, Man, don't call me out on my own you stream. Said there was no way. If it was, it was before I knew about this thing. Oh my god, I angry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I angry at you. Uh, hello, Giant Bomb member <laughs> Voidburger. I'm angry. I didn't know. I can't believe I got a Giant Bomb member on my stream. I'm calling you out. It's okay. All right. Anyway, I just want to come in and be like, yo, dude. What the fuck? Anyway. Well, on. I can help you next time you stream. Ah. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. I love you. Goodbye. I love you too, allegedly. <laughs> what? You're keeping secrets from me. Ah. OBS wow. I made the my little bits thing way smaller, but now the text is super tiny. I'm going to figure that out some other time. Anyways, what is happening? What's happening? Hmm. Oh, it fixed itself. I don't want fever. I want chill. Whoop. <laughs> I immediately fucked up by looking at the chat. Ooh, there, I am getting, like, inputs eaten sometimes. Now, that was just a fuck up on my part, but... I have to, like, double tap the A button sometimes to get it to spin, which feels very bad. Anyways, I'm doing great at Dr. Mario. Oh, no! Like, a double tap there! That felt weird! I'm doing real good at Dr. Mario, everybody. When you take medication, it's good to have them stacked vertically like this in your throat. Makes them go down real easy. 
And now I get to sue Mario for a lot of money. Because I swallowed the pills bad on purpose! What? What is this sound? Beep! Who stopped the, the tunes? All right. Just normal Mario Bros. Mr. Mary! That's right, before Mario became truly popular, he was originally called Mr. Mary. You all thought I was Jumpman. You're fucking wrong. He was Mr. Mary. Ooh, this game in particular feels real bad when you're doing the, uh, using the D-pad on the shitty thing. Yep, sick. Like, I am pushing in all the way on this thing, and I'm barely getting Mario to go on this one. Oops, don't double tap. <laughs> don't double tap the Koopa. One bullet is enough. Shit. Fucking got him! Anyways. Oh shit. I can't read that. Turtles won. Bigger than before. Yeah, Josh Moni's with the the little the bits there. Uh, yeah, it's the video signal. This thing is outputting is fucking garbage. So what it's the uh, the cable coming out of this? All it sends out is composite video. You know, like the shitty little yellow cable uh, that you would you know put into TVs fucking twenty years ago. And then for audio, it puts out a single audio source. It puts out mono audio. <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm going right when I push down to the D-pad. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no. This is fucking me up really bad. Well, there's still three turtles left. Ooh, no, that feels so bad. Holy shit, I keep going right. I've never really played this game. I, I know about the shitty swimming underwater level that happens really early on with all the electri electric uh, seaweed that fucks you up and it's like impossible. And I, th is it this version or is it like a computer port of this game that has a part where there's just an impossible jump that you can't make because the, the distance is too far across and the ceiling is too low so you always bump your head and fall to your death? I got him. There's one thing I like a lot about, uh... One thing I like about a lot of NES games is the amount of really good strutting animations you get. I mean, of course you got all your Castlevanias, which, like... Maybe were the first game to, to have a very good strut in them. But then you got shit like this, and you got, uh... What was that real crap game called? Treasure Master or something like that? That game had an incredible strut animation in it as well. Mm. I keep going the wrong direction! Uh, leave me alone. Let me go into the manhole. And get obliterated. Dying on the ladder, a shameful death. Well... Turtles 4. How's this gonna be fucked up? This is just tournament fighters, I think? At least this one's in English.
I'm mostly fine with still playing like older retro games and stuff, but I think my cutoff point is starting to change a little bit where before it was like anything before the NES, I'm going to have a real tough time playing and probably won't even care about playing it, you know, just for, for fun's sake. Um, and now I'm starting to phase the NES out a little bit because there's a, there's very few NES games that I want or still enjoy playing at this point, aside from, you know, the couple, the, like, dozen big ones. Um, and now it's a little bit more like, I, you know, maybe nothing earlier than Super Nintendo. I've never played Tournament Fighters, and I've never really seen much of this game in action. And even with Super Nintendo, there's a lot of jank shit, like... That just feels terrible to play and isn't that fun or is tedious. <laughs> got Mike's got an anti-air. I barely know what I am doing here. Yo, is that the throw? Do I throw with that button when I'm close enough? I do. Whoa. Give me the ball. What is this ball for? I'm trying to do like a Hadouken motion and that sometimes gets something out of it, but not consistently. This game doesn't look too bad. I like the parallax in the background and stuff, but... but... Yeah, for like Super Nintendo, it's like any mainline Nintendo developed stuff, you know, still good. A lot of RPGs are still real good on that. There's a handful of real good platformers, you know, from like Capcom or Konami, are still pretty dope. Can't really go wrong with the Mega Man, even the, the not super great ones like X3. Still holds up a lot better than most other games. Mike and Leo are going to play footsies. Ah, oh, shit. I barely know anything about fighting game terminology. Once, like, eight years ago, for, like, an hour, someone taught me how to do Street Fighter with, with Ryu. Because I always wanted to play uh, fighting games, but no one else fucking cared. No one else I played games with fucking cared about fighting games. All they wanted to play was uh, Diablo and Halo, and, like, that was about it. And then if you brought up something like Goldeneye, they'd be like, Yeah, Goldeneye is dope. Do you want to play it? No. I want to play fucking... Oh, God damn it! What was that? A lot of people in my school wanted to play Red Dead Revolver multiplayer, and I don't know why, because I hated the multiplayer in that game. Anyways, Contra 1. Uh... Am I just, like, 12 and 1? Okay, so there's a game in the 401 that has a 12 and 1 in it? <coughs> I'm guessing this is basically just like starting the game with different weapons or different levels. What is a suit gun? I've also never played much of Contra. So I'm probably going to fuck this up real good. The most of any Contra I've played is, um, what's it called? The really good one in the Genesis, Contra Hardcore, I think. I've never beaten that, but I've played fucking shit. All right, you don't fucking die in water. Um, Contra Hardcore was pretty good, and I played a lot of that at a barcade once. But again, everyone else got really frustrated with it because it's fucking hard and you die in one shot. I really want the spread gun, but too late. Give me the F instead.
Again, I'm getting really fucked up by the fact that when I push down, a lot of the time I go right and vice versa. I'm the good Contra man. Contra still feels pretty fun to play, though. This is an NES game that I should probably actually just revisit for... or visit in full for real sometime. Because it still feels good. And seems cool. Whoa, whoa. Just fucking stay crouched! Up. Couldn't you blow up the guns? Am I am I just at a stupid Oh yes, you can. I'm just hitting them at a weird angle. Yep. God, remember when there was a new Contra? Like, was that last year, the year before that Konami put out, and it was really terrible? And then they were like, what? This game reviewed bad? Contra Fork. Burn, Smith, Beans, Iron. I'm gonna be Beans. Uh, wait a minute, is this fucking... <coughs> is this a Neo Geo... Pocket color metal slug or whatever. This is metal slug. This is fucking metal slug. And I died immediately. Hell yeah. Wow, look at how compact my guy gets when he jumps. What is going on there? All right. You can blow up the crates. Good to know. Contra Force, huh? So something I'm really... Uh, I can't remember. I think I read an article about this a few months ago. But I remember somebody wrote a story basically going about the history of, like, these bootleg, you know, 101 game consoles. Whoa. Hold on there. Ho hold on there. I'm trying to figure out if I can throw grenades. No use. Command select? Can I switch to burns? No, I'm still beans. Hmm. Okay. Does select do anything different? Select don't do shit. <laughs> and I ate it. Rip to beans. Um, can I just ride this shit? I can just ride this shit. But yeah, there's a story about, about how there, essentially there is still NES game development happening because some of these... Uh, Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Watch out, Beans. There's, um... Some of these games aren't even bootleg ROMs, but just shitty games somebody actually develops for the thing. And they're being made as recently as of at least a few years ago, which is kind of cool in a weird way. Um... But that also brings up the idea of, like, hey... These are kind of weird and an important part of gaming history in a way. Ah, sh ah, Beans! Ah, oh, Beans! Uh, so, you know, shouldn't the, these games be also archived for history's sake? And that's not being done by anybody, because these are some weird bootleg-ass things. So, what I'm asking is basically, has anyone ever seen Contra Force before? Because I have no idea if there's a way to rip these ROMs out of this thing's internal memory. I bet if I pop this open, it's just a fucking SD card or something. Um... 
Because I'll try and get that up somewhere if it's a... Uh... Contra Force is a real NES release. Huh. Hmm. Contra 7. Hmm. Super Contra 7. Oh, there's a wiki entry for Contra Force. Alright. Wow. Yeah, why are they still releasing the, these weird thing, games and, and this stuff? I don't know. This stuff must still be lucrative somewhere, right? Or it's at least just so cheap to make that, you know, you're making some kind of money off of it. Lighten them up. My lighting up days are over. I'm in heaven with beans now. Shit! My clone is in heaven with beans now. I jumped on a man and died. lives do I have? Cannot see when I pause. Well! That's a game over. Alright, so that's the first page. I'm gonna say maybe we go through one more page before we move on to something else, and then, you know, we can... <laughs> We can revisit this thing later on if people want to see more of this weird shit. I'm just hoping for some more really weird, uh, like, ROM hack stuff. What is Kage? Looks like a real game. It's got a good s stage start. Oh, have I played this before? Multiple hits! Short range! Getting fucking elbowed in the face! This reminds me that I played, um... Oh, what's the name of that game? There's a, a game that got published... It's on Game Pass. Uh, fucking hell. Um... It got published by, um... I can't remember the name of anything right now. The, the people that publish Shovel Knight. Uh, S Cyber Shadow? Cyber Shadow, I think? This game's reminding me of Cyber Shadow a little bit. Um, and I really wanted, like, Cyber Shadow, because it looked dope. Had a good look to it. It looked like it was pretty fun, but man, the, even early on, the level design was just kind of... ...getting to me as being a little frustrating. Uh, yeah, Yacht Club games. Um... So I just kind of put Cyber Shadow down pretty quick. You know, I'll check it out again later when I have <laughs> more free time. Uh, I'm sure some of you... Whoa. I don't think that hurt me. They are just pushing me. Um, I'm sure, you know, especially if you follow me on Twitter, you probably know what's been happening with me recently. I'm just extremely busy at work. And when I'm not being busy at work, I am just very tired. And so I don't want to do anything. The only thing I, I, I managed to do... I would love to hit this thing. I would love to hit this thing. I would love to swing up and hit this thing. Um, there we go. The only thing I've been, you know been able to do still is, uh, guest on the, well, not guest, but be one of, uh, be on the JoJo podcast, basically, that Grant and I are doing, which, by the way, starts up again tomorrow, Monday, the 15th, where we will begin talking about part four of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Diamond is Unbreakable. 
We were uh, originally going to do three episodes for this first podcast, but we ended up only doing two because we went over two hours just talking about the first two episodes. But I'm really excited to, to finally be talking about per part four. It, it might be my favorite part. Um, we got a nice healthy backlog after taking that month-long break after we finished Stardust Crusaders. So we've got like an eight-week backlog now, I think. So there's going to be no breaks and updates there, just like with uh, parts one through three, where we just we just went uninterrupted. This game is okay. And a, a monkey is about to jump on my head, but I think it's time to move on because this game just seems like a game. Aether mission! Aether mission! Mmm. Ooh. What? What? Why is that shaking? Why is this. I want to stop shooting because it sounds so bad, but shooting is the way, only way to live. So, like, when I'm mashing the shoot button here, it's... Like, I'm mashing faster than it's shooting, and so it's actually still registering every single shoot... Uh, button press to shoot and it's like queuing them up so I push it so many times I can like let go of the button and I'll continue to shoot a couple more shots this sounds real bad I can't listen to the the pew pew anymore fantasy zone neck eyes my eyes! Fuck. This looks like Fantasy Zone, but what is going on with the HUD down there? Holy shit! Welcome to the Fantasy Zonk. Fuck. My little guy. <laughs> had, to, had to tell the, the auto mod to allow the phrase, fantasy zone, but for fuckers through, because that's what this is. I'm fucking this up. I swear to God, I've been pretty good at fantasy zone when I've had to play it a bunch in basically almost every single Yakuza game. Because I want to get those sweet achievements. Every time I play a Yakuza game, I think, oh, I'm going to 100% this one. And then I peter out about like 60% of the way there because I realize I have to play all the gambling mini games again, and I just really don't want to do that. Oh, I've only got 2100 gold, but uh, I don't really know... Well, extra parts if I scroll over. Yeah, this really hurts my eyes to look at, but I just... Give me the laser beam. Give me the jet engine. Let's get out of here. What is going on with the HUD? It is so fucked up looking. It looks like it is a a a meme your grandparents have passed around Facebook 3,000 times and it's been Xerox to an inch of its life. It just looks like straight up JPEG compression. The song's still dope though. Yeah, it's it's deep fried. Fuck. That is a deep-fried HUD, and I can't look at it anymore. Adventure Island Dad. Oh, shit. That's not what I wanted. You're spoiling the thing. Adventure Island Dad. Okay, it's Adventure Island. I never played much of the original Adventure Island. The egg is good? The egg is good. All I know is that at some point you can jump on a skateboard and you're like uncontrollable. And you better fucking watch out because your little man's gonna die at any second. 
this is a pretty good strutting animation, too. There's a skateboard in that egg. Time to die. Fantasy Zonek. Ah, fuck. I wish I had the energy to run around like this. Instead, I sit at a computer all day, and then sometimes my brain thinks I'm dying or something. I don't know. Like, look at his legs go! Damn! Shit. Well, it's Adventure Island, Dad. Doesn't seem too fucked up, aside from the, the neon colors. Adven Island 2. This is where Sephiroth comes back to life a third time. Decision! I couldn't decide. I had zero egg. Goodbye to that skateboard. Whoa! Holy shit. Feeling super powerful, like when you get a kangaroo in S Super Bomberman f 4? Whatever that- whichever ones it is on the, the Super Nintendo. Choose an egg! It's been chosen. Can't decide! This feels like the, a pretty natural platformer progression from the first to the... I'm guessing this is actually the second Adventure Island and not some fucked up weird ROM hack or something. This this looks too good to be a ROM hack. Um, but yeah, the platformer progression of like, well, you could jump and do a bunch of cool stuff. We can't really change that formula too much. So what if you just rode on a guy this time? What if you had a little Yoshi type friend? Well, that's Advan Island 2. What else we got? Chipdale 1. Great. <laughs> Great. I'll be Chip, because I'm Chip. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Shit! Shit! Chip's gonna die soon. Chip died. Also, just seems like a real video game that happened in some point in time. In fact, I may have seen this... shit. I may have seen this at a Blockbuster once and almost rented it. Before I realized they had, like, Mega Man 6 in still or something, and I got that shit instead. I hated going to Blockbuster. It always had a way worse selection that... Ooh, that was a bad sound effect. Um... I had a way worse selection usually than like the family video that was closer to me and also they were like twice as fucking expensive Well, that's Chipdale 1 We got to see what Chipdale 3 is 
I can pick up toss those crates. I should have tried that out. Hip Ale. Three. Hip Ale. What? Hip Ale. <laughs> what? Whoa! He's got a gun! This is 10 years after Chip Dale won, and everyone's got a gun. These keys? What are these? I can't pick that one up. This is Venom Chip. It's Punished Chip. This is my favorite uh, game in this, <laughs> in this thing so far. Kid Nicky 3 with Mario's head, pretty funny, but this one's extremely funny to me. This is Ikari Warriors, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, chat's saying Ikari Warriors. Don't know what I'm building down there. A super gun? Hmm. This is incredible. This is a really... This is a great ROM hack. Okay, those chests only open with the keys at the... Aw, oh, fuck. Did he show his ass to me? Those chests only open with the keys that you pick up from dead guys. There's one. There's two! Give me that shit. Fuck! Yeah, it's just Ikari Warriors, but with funny sprite. I like it, but also, basically, let, let's, I think a boss shows up here. I think this is the end of the first level. Let's try to do that at least before we, uh, move on. spin. Alright. I like that one. We got Bubble Bobble 2. I think this is just Bubble Bobble 2. Not like in that red to white text flash, but... You get bobble bobbled. A fate worse than death. Get turned into a parfait. Feels like shit. Can I jump on the bubbles I make? No. I thought you could. Am I just crazy? Fucking get down here! Oh, 
Well, shit. Was it hold jump? Yeah, you bounce on him, that's right. Thank you. Well, shit. A shoe! Bubble bobble! Alright, I think we had one more game. Two more games. Snow Bros. Mm. But how do the Snow Bros play into this? That's informing me the sequel to Snow Bros is Snow Bros 2 with new elves. That's a good name. This is a lot of text for Snow Bros, I gotta say. However, I will I will endure all the text. I'm an expert gamer, which means I never skip cutscenes. Never on the first time around will I skip a cutscene, no matter how boring it is. Damn, look at me, I'm a snow bro. Oh shit! Look at that jump! Okay. So I'm trying to figure out the rules of the snow bros. Obviously, I can bury dudes in snow. Ah, oh, shit. Fuck. Okay. Okay, you, you keep hitting them until they become a snowball, and then you fucking shove them into stuff and obliterate them. Whoa, okay. You can also push yourself around with the snowballs. Good to know. It's very Bubble Bobble-like. But just a little different. Damn. Shit. If I actually spent the time to get the hang of this, this actually seems like it would be pretty fun, because it's basically just Bubble Bobble. It is a- it is a Bobble-like... But anyways... I think we had one more game? Mitsume? Hmm... Wow. Those are just trolls, like the little dolls from the 90s. Walking around town obliterating trolls with my third eye, as you do. me. Why would I shoot these cute little things? Hmm. 
Oh, shit. Whoop! Bad timing. Bad timing. I'm getting fucked up by these spiders. This also just seems like a real video game. I'm surprised that basically every other game after the very first one, which is just Mario Brothers, seems to, while not emulate great, seems to at least be a lot more accurate and closer to what you would want from an, an NES experience than... That, that Mario Brothers one is super weird. Um, but yeah, I did notice while flipping through the li this list, while well, it says it's 401 games, and there are 400 entries in the list, around like 300 or so, it seems like the the games just start repeating. And I don't, I, you know, I haven't tried those, so I don't know if maybe they're the same game, but with like a slightly different version of it or with cheat codes on it or something like that. Um yeah, it's a bunch of... There's definitely some more jank shit down here. But also, you know, like Load Runner, uh, Milk and Nuts, which is also a real game, along with Mappy. Uh, you know, Raid O Bungling. Ice Climber. Like, there's a bunch of real shit on here. But there's also some weird... Hot High School? Hold on. This is probably a beat-em-up, I bet. This has to be a Kunio Kun thing, right? Oh, yep. This is probably the dodgeball game. This might be dodgeball. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, that's totally what this what this is. But yeah, I think at some other point we will we will come back and Check and pop. Uh, we will come back and revisit this some other time and check out some more of the games. Uh, oh, excuse me. I just suddenly got tired. We got Puyan, we got Popeye. Which, man, that uh, Popeye game that came out on the Switch like last week or whatever. It's pretty funny how bad it is, but also... Uh, it feels like it's a little bit harder to just be like, haha, look at this fucking trash game that came out that's super bizarre because everyone's looking for those to, to milk the content out of them real quick. So it's just like, yeah, the Popeye game, it's, it's bad, but I, I don't know. Okay. So I'm trying to think right now. Should we move on to something else, or should I call it here, because I might be getting tired? I don't know. It's only 10, 10 p.m. here. It's still the weekend, technically. Hmm. Thinking. Thinking. Ah, oh, it sucks, because I've been really... I was really enjoying streaming... Because it's been so fucking long. Like, the only streams I've been on since the last time, you know, I did a stream on this channel several months ago was I've been guessing on Voiberger's streams when she's doing her first time playthrough of Psychonauts 2. So if you go over to the Voiberger gaming channel, you can see me on there and, and see Voiberger seeing all of Psychonauts 2 for the first time, which is a very exciting because Psychonauts 2 is uh, really good. Uh, but other than that, I haven't been on shit. I haven't been doing shit. Oh, I'm just like sleepy. Cause I got, I could switch over to the VCR here. I do have some, some good stuff, but I'm also like, should I save it? So that like, 
because this is like good shit. I I almost don't want to waste it while I'm like sleepy. So maybe maybe we'll save it for another time. Uh, Road fighter and Othello. Um, mm, this is really tough. Yeah, I think I might just have to call it here, unfortunately. I'm just getting a little too, too, little too tired, I think. Also, it's getting hot in this room. I had the door closed, you know, because I, I already talk kind of loud, especially when I'm doing streams, and I Voidbreaker's out in the living room, and I don't want to bug her yelling about uh, NES ROM hacks. But, yeah, thanks, everybody, for coming by and watching. I'm really happy I was able to stream again. Hopefully, we could do it again sometime soon, take a look at more of these janky games. See if we can find anything else pretty funny in here. Maybe we'll play Game 81 titled Nibbles. Um, but yeah, until then, uh, tomorrow, and if you're listening to this on YouTube now, it's already out. Uh, Bizarre Podcast Dogs Must Die will be returning with Grant and I talking about Part 4 of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Diamonds Unbreakable. We'll be talking about the first two episodes, and every week we're generally going to be talking about two or three episodes of the show at a time. Uh, of course, I've watched all of JoJo that's been animated so far. This is Grant's first run around through JoJo, so it's been super fun uh, <laughs> seeing his reaction to the crazy shit that happened there. But yeah, until then, uh, see you later, everybody. I'll see you soon. Oh, and also we got one more thing. I got these stupid little video clips I play at the end, so watch that. Do you like video games? No. Do you play them? No. Why? <laughs> it's a communist plot. <laughs> <laughs> you got to watch out for them, Reds, because I guess they are trying to hypnotize the masses, possibly. Is that what it could sure. be? Sure. It's well, Actually, what it is is the Department of Defense is the way they're trying to train all the United States citizens in order to fight all these aliens that someday may invade our planet. Totally.